Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for May 18th, 2021. Well, yesterday we had just kind of a choppy, man, go nowhere day. Um, ended up with three of the indexes down uh, just a slight amount. Although they held up quite well in the Diamonds of Spy, we still have the concerns with the NASDAQ and IWM. And um, just that little bit of uncertainty um, as we kind of wait for the FOMC um, minutes on Wednesday. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we grab ourselves something to drink, let's settle into our office chairs, and let's get ready for the Tuesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. So good morning once again, everyone. Thanks for being here. I truly, truly appreciate it. Let's dig into some of these technicals and see if we can glean some information about how we might want to approach the market for today. First off, if we take a look at the Dow here, you can see we've got a couple issues here that we still need to address. First off, we held this support. Well, we recovered this support. Now the tricky question is, will we hold this support um, in the in this chart and that's still yet to be seen we are doing a nice little job of consolidating at least at this point um, um, in the diamonds chart now keep in mind we still have overhead resistance remember this is a pretty ugly shooting star pattern up here um, suggesting a possible top so is it possible that we could put in a shoulder a head and be building another shoulder over here uh, may be possible but we're getting some energy here in the um, in the market this morning with really strong results from Home Depot Home Depot had blowout results and you can see it's pointing to an upside move this morning and we also have Walmart pushing strongly higher this morning. So we've got some bullish action in here based on those earnings reports, but we also have to keep in mind that we have some more data coming um, here before the open, and we'll talk about that in just a second, that could also create some issues. One of the things we do have to recognize is that overall, our trend in the diamonds remains bullish and is up. And so that is good. We've got 30 companies in the Dow and they continue those industrial companies, kind of the boring companies, dividend paying companies are holding up quite well. So kind of keep that in mind. And then we have the SPY, SPY. Now SPY had a nice improvement in the uh, from the sell-off but let's keep in mind we are still under a significant level of resistance and this big old bearish engulfing candle showing that rejection of the high is a little bit concerning here still so as we try to press and rally up here we have to keep a close eye on that and realize that we could run into this resistance and still come under some pressure here in the market however if we can push that through if we can push that through and hold up there then hey sky's the limit again we could move right on through to the upside but we want to watch that closely we don't want to ignore the fact that we have some price resistance in the chart once again overall trend remains bullish in the SPY. However, our problem comes into the market when we take a look at the NASDAQ. And the NASDAQ is in an official downtrend. We have had made lower lows and lower highs. And we are currently sitting below our 50 day moving average. Now, our 50 day moving average is uh, one of those places that it's kind of like one of those psychological points in the market. It can serve as a barrier. It can serve as um, obviously a support level. And right now we just have that question. Hmm, will we have enough energy to push back up? And one of the things that's going on this morning that's adding a little bit of pressure or uncertainty to this is while we are trying to put on a bullish 
Um, look here this morning, we also have bonds uh, moving higher, and we know those bonds have a pretty negative effect on the NASDAQ. Now, does that mean the NASDAQ can't go higher? Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, we could move right up into this resistance area pretty easily. So keep that in mind, we could push on higher here but we still have to recognize that we do have price resistance in this chart and really considerable price resistance in this chart. Imagine if we can actually push up through the base of that resistance in here that we still have a major level of resistance above that still. So we could still move higher, but we have these complications in here to be thinking about. And then that possibility of the overall downtrend weight on this just continuing to press us down we could run into that level right in here and kind of catch that double whammy of that pushback to the downside so watch that closely and as we see these bonds rising we'll want to keep a close eye on that um, keep in mind that this is also a trend break we um, we are not holding um, an upside trend in the Nasdaq at the moment let's take a look at IWM now IWM um, kind of a messy pattern, as you can see here, um, largely chopping in a range. And IWM was the only index that had um, enough energy yesterday to actually put in a bullish day, put in a bullish print. We're pushing up toward this resistance high. Now, this was largely due to the fact of financials looking bullish and energy sector stocks looking bullish yesterday, pushing on higher. But we cannot rule out the fact that we are pressing back up into this little downtrend in the chart and that we have significant overhead resistance in this chart that we still have to deal with. So watch that closely. It's nice to see this elevation that we're pushing back up, but we can't ignore the signals in here, that potential resistance. And we should also be keeping in mind that the 50 day moving average, we could be testing that 50 day moving average here soon. And let's notice that the shorter term moving averages have already crossed down through the 50. So that's creating a layer of price resistance in here that we have to overcome to the upside. We're going to need a pretty good bullish push to push us on through there. And I'm not saying that that can occur. It certainly can, but we want to be watching that level closely um, in the chart. So we've got two of the indexes trying to hold up pretty well, and we've got two of the indexes really in um, that bearish mode that are giving us that uncertainty in the market, creating a little bit of an angst. And um, we are seeing that in the VIX. Take a look at the VIX. Now the VIX, I've mentioned this uh, many times before, um, where we have that situation, we spike up in a, that original sh knee jerk shock, and um, then we pull back. The problem is if we pull back and hold um, onto that downtrend as support, if we were to hold on to this and that fear comes back in, this is where the real selling can begin. And we've seen that in the past many, many times where we get that first higher low, we move up, we get that first higher low, and then we pull back, we test support, support holds, and that's where the real fear spike comes in. Now, I'm not suggesting that's what's going to occur here, just that the possibility exists and we're going to have to stay on our toes and be watch for that, for that possibility. I want everyone to just think about carefully as, you're, as we're trying to, trying to be very, very bullish, I want you to think very carefully about how quickly the pain of last week's sell-off came into play. And if we try to ignore that, that um, and try to just put on blinders and say that can't happen again, trust me, it can. And we need to be on guard for that. We need to be on our toes for that possibility that it could occur. So we want to be careful not to be racing or chasing into the market saying, uh, this time it'll be different. Um, that's not proven yet. So watch that carefully. So as we hold these levels here in the chart, let's kind of keep that in mind that there is some uncertainty out there and the market is kind of in a way hedging its bet 
right in here. We're trying to show bullishness in the current price action of the market, yet at the same time, we're, we've got some indicators out there showing us just a little bit of uncertainty. So watch that close. Let's take a look at our T2122, which is the four week new high, new low ratio. Now keep in mind, T2122 does not tell us the direction of the market. It only indicates to us when we've reached an overbought or oversold condition. And let's keep in mind, we went from oversold here and just in two quick days to the upside, we came almost all the way back up into an overbought condition in the short term. Now we do still have some room to the upside, as you can see, we can still move up and we're going to try to do that this morning. Um, assuming that we we don't run into some problems with um, some of the economic data coming out we're looking bullish at the moment trying to push up but what that also means is if we gap or push up this morning we're going to be right up here in that bearish reversal zone we'll hit that possible upside um, resistance um, in the charts and that could mean the possibility of a pop and drop or an intraday whipsaw. So make sure that you're being careful not to chase the morning gap. Make sure you're holding onto those stocks in the right place and not rushing in on that morning pop. We've been fooled by that many, many times. Don't let them fool you again and race into the morning pop. Let's take a look at our T2101. Now T2101 is the absolute market breadth. Notice that we have been struggling in market breadth. We continue to struggle in market breadth. And when we had our biggest rally in market breadth, it happens to be coming in on the selling wave um, of the market. So kind of um, be really, really careful. Market breadth continues to diminish and we continue to press and press trying to move this market up. And it's possible we could still move it up. There's, I'm not saying we can't, but this is a little concerning still and remains a little bit of a concern as market breadth continues to just kind of dwindle here in the market. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. In our economic calendar, what I've alluded to a couple of times, we've got a couple things on here that we're gonna to wanna to pay attention to. And that's gonna be the housing starts and the permits this morning. Now, right now, consensus is suggesting it comes in pretty strong, um, right about where it was last reading. But we also have to remember that um, we have just had a massive increase in material costs and that may be starting to slow things in that area. So watch that closely. This could be an interesting number this morning to determine whether or not those rising material costs are slowing folks down because we've had a lumber increase of nearly 300 percent and um, if, if it is not slowing down, that could also elevate that little bit of concern that the market is overheating. And um, so we've got that double-edged sword here that could be going on. If it comes in hot, that could be just a just as much of a problem if it comes in weak. So watch that carefully. Keep in mind, we have several Fed speakers here today. Um, some bond auctions, but they're, um, they're real short-term option auctions. So don't think we have much going on uh, there. Now also keep in mind, we could see kind of a light and choppy day. And remember, it's not abnormal as we wait for an FOMC minutes release tomorrow afternoon, we could see just kind of a light and choppy market waiting for well, something. How are we going to deal with inflation? What are we going to do? Um, there is that uncertainty out there, even though Jerome Powell and pretty much everyone um, at the Fed just continues to come out. We're not raising rates. We're not raising rates. We're not raising rates. Um, but that 4% inflation number may start changing some of those attitudes here soon. So watch that closely. Let's take a look at um, our earnings calendar. Now our earnings calendar today, we have more than 40 companies reporting, and but a good deal of those are coming in um, early this morning. And I already mentioned Home Depot, we had a good blowout earning, just a, a massive blowout earnings uh, from Home Depot this morning. And um, you can see the results of that. Obviously a notable report today. 
And um, we are also seeing a very strong reaction here in Walmart this morning. So big retail doing pretty well. But let's take a look at some of the others that are notable this morning. Uh, Baidu will be reporting today. It looks like it's trying to edge a little bit higher. Obviously, this has been in kind of an ugly downtrend. So we need some kind of inspiration here to bring in some bulls on Baidu. Let's take a look. We've also got IQ reporting today. Once again, this has been a pretty ugly sell-off here in IQ. Trying to perk up here this morning, but watch that closely. Another retailer, Macy's, reporting today. It looks like it's trying to extend this morning. Um, was moving up toward its earnings report. And let's keep in mind, as it moves up here, we're going to be challenging some all-time highs here. Um, in Macy's. So watch that closely. We have NTES. NTES will be reporting today. Looks like we're getting a little bit of a, a pop and drop type price action in the pre-market, gapping up on those earnings and pulling back just a little bit. Um, there's our downtrend we'll want to keep an eye on as we come up here to challenge that area in the chart. Um, how about SE? SE, we're getting a little bit of gaming uh, coming in here this morning trying to um, push um, in those earnings, but notice kind of a whipsaw going on here in that pre-market activity, not exactly what I would call a bullish reaction. TTWO um, also reporting today, it looks like it's trying to move up just a little bit that those uh, games are really suffering here lately. Um, in this pullback and we've got a downtrend to deal with in that chart in TTWO. How about TTM? TTM also reporting today. Moving on up this morning, um, some good signs in this chart. We're breaking some downtrends, okay? Breaking some downtrends, starting to hold a higher low, starting to hold some support in here. This looks like um, it may be worth putting on a list, watching for that next entry into the trade. And last but not least that I have on the list for today is TCOM. This will be reporting today. It looks like we're still suffering a little bit in this downtrend, trying to perk up a little bit this morning. Now, I can't tell you if that's just the bullishness this morning, trying to perk it up or if it already has reported earnings, but keep an eye on that. This needs to break that downtrend, prove that it can hold support, and then there may be some upside here in that chart. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up, guys. But before we do that, if you could do me a favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you can be notified every time I post one of these videos. And also, if you feel that the video was worthy, if it helped you plan your day today, if you could please do me a favor and click that uh, bell icon, or excuse me, click that thumbs up button um, so that you can be notified, um, or excuse me, that uh, clicking the thumbs up button and leaving a brief comment is really one of the more important things that you can do on YouTube. It helps the algorithms um, show these videos to more folks. Folk, um, YouTube says, well, if, more, if so many people are clicking the thumbs up button and they like it, they want to show that video to more folks. So the more you guys do that, the more it helps out. And I truly, truly appreciate it. And by the way, it doesn't have to be a lengthy comment. You can just put in a happy face and that that um that's a comment um so thank you to everyone who does take the time to do that i truly appreciate it um also need to make a big shout out to those folks that are supporting the channel through the buy me a coffee link that's right underneath the video um the title of the video i just want to say thank you so much um you guys humble me every day i truly appreciate it Let's take a look at some of these stocks and remember that as I talk about some of these stocks, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. As a matter of fact, I always say do your own due diligence. Make sure you're never, ever blindly following someone else's analysis. Um, you need to know the why of the trade before you jump in and understand those risks. However, there are some good looking charts setting up. Take a look at Alcoa here. Now, I, I got to tell you, it's been a long, long time since I had any interest in aluminum. But look at this beautiful run that we have been um, going that's gone on in aluminum. And we have this in 
really nice setup setting up here. You can see I've got a price alert. It's looking like it's going to alert this morning here on Alcoa. Alcoa looking very, very good following the trend, staying in a nice consolidation here and ready to pop on out, it looks like. So watch that carefully. Alcoa looking good. Take a look at some of the um, shipping and ports. Um, they're looking pretty decently here. Now, this has been setting up in a pattern. You can see we broke through some resistance here in the chart. Let me push this back to a weekly. Um, we broke through some resistance in the chart. So this is a big move, multi-year breaking out to the upside. And you can see that consolidation in here. Want to be watching that for that potential move or pop on through here. Um, speaking of metals, I think we need to be taking a pretty close look at steel. Um, Steel is one of those areas that's been in a beautiful upside trend. You can see I've alerted on MT here several times in this trend. And MT will be alerting again this morning, trying to push on through here. Um, looking very, very good in its trend. And it's not just MT, there's also Steel Dynamics that is setting up beautiful trade, beautiful chart. One of the things I always look for in my charts and trades, I don't look for stocks that are getting these big whippy candles or great big giant candles. I like these nice, concise, consistent charts. Um, STLD looking very, very good. And I'm gonna have to mention CLF. Now CLF, I have a little bit of a bias on because I bought it yesterday. CLF had a nice little pullback, was showing bullishness in here. We picked this up early yesterday in RWO, have a profit in it already. We love that immediate gratification getting into a trade and having it immediately move for us. And it looks like it could be trying to move just a little bit higher this morning. Keep a close eye on that. So there's another one of those steel stocks looking uh, very, very good good. Um, a stock that you might want to keep an eye on is Kroger here. Now Kroger has gone through a lot of struggling in here um, in this consolidation, but I have to believe that in a in a um, area of inflation that we are dealing with and, and kind of some, well, we've heard of quite a few food shortage um, issues starting to crop up and largely concerns of drought um, in California and things like that on food. We might want to keep an eye here on Kroger. And I did see a report, not that it matters, that Warren Buffett is increasing his bet here on Kroger. Keep an eye on that. These are some boring stocks. And I understand these aren't the hoppers and the poppers, uh, boring stocks, but my goodness, we can make great profits in these trades. Now let's take a quick look at some of the other sectors. Um, I mentioned financials. Um, financials continue to look good. Keep an eye on those banks. Financials holding up in a beautiful upside trend, staying very, very strong. And if we take a look at energies, I think you can look at a lot of different places in the energy sector to find nice stocks. And look right in here this morning, we're trying to gap above this resistance level in XLE Energy. Um, holding up, looking very, very strong. Now, financials and energies can help that IWM move on higher. So look for stocks in those areas as well. So hopefully that gives you a few ideas for today. Um, there are good sectors out there, but there's also very weak sectors. So we have to be kind of picky about um, the trades we take and make sure that you're being really, really careful not to chase an already extended stock. They'll be the first ones to get really punished if the market does pull back. Everyone, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. Have an awesome, awesome trading day. And I will see you right back here bright and early Wednesday morning. Talk to you soon. Everyone.